In the later half of the 19th century, the economy on the central coast of California was awakening. San Luis Bay was full of merchants and travelers who were busy using Mala's Landing, the People's Wharf, and eventually Harford's Pier. There was a hum of activity on Smith Island, the hand terrace rock with cantilevered houses, occupied by multiple families with children, some of which were even born on the island. Across the water at Fisherman's Village, men were preparing for the day by cleaning their nets and tying their line. Harford Pier, which had been built with much help from local Chinese labor leader, A Lui, was constructed in the ideal position for San Luis Bay. Waves broke softer on its northwest position and securing ships was more manageable. Passengers from San Francisco were arriving daily. Ships carrying lumber, local made asphalt, ore, hides, tallow, grains, and many other products were being loaded and unloaded from the piers daily. San Luis Bay was bustling. During the last decade of the 19th century, over 900 ships were making calls to the piers at Avila on an annual basis. While commerce and popularity grew, the need for safety grew as well, especially at night. In the mid-1880s, requests were made for a fog signal and light to guide mariners into the harbor, but it was slow going getting the government to move. Around this time, the Pacific Coast Steamship Company ran many different routes up and down the west coast from Alaska to Mexico, including a stop in none other than Avila's Port Harford. On the night of May 1st, 1888, the ship the Queen of the Pacific was about 15 miles from Avila when alarms began to ring on board. The ship was taking on water and slowly sinking. In desperation, the captain headed towards Port Harford. Likely the fog was so thick that the captain had no choice but to slowly creep towards the harbor to avoid even more catastrophe by hitting the hidden rocks that lined the coast. The water levels continued to rise higher and higher as the ship sank dangerously deeper. Finally, the pier was in view, but it was too late. All hands were evacuated into lifeboats and the ship sank nearly 500 feet from the wharf. Six weeks later, construction bids for a lighthouse were being made. The project was awarded to the lowest bidder, G.W. Kenny, out of Santa Barbara, whose bid was close to half the cost of others. It is said that he lost a considerable amount of money on the project. Problems with construction began to rise almost immediately. The winter of 1889 was the most severe on record. Rain started in October and seemed to never end. Adding to the complications, the government inspector was a challenge to the point of abusive. Often, arriving drunk on the job, threatening employees with irrational demands and costly plan changes. Eventually, the job was finished, and on June 30th, 1890, the light was finally lit. The light burned kerosene and used a fourth-order Fresnel lens, which could be seen by ships nearly 20 miles out to sea. The following year, the fog whistle was completed, adding another level of guidance for ships entering the bay. Commerce in the port steadily increased over the next decade and then boomed when oil was discovered on the central coast. The new lighthouse and well-situated Harford Pier helped Union Oil decide to begin shipping through Avila. By 1910, an oil pier extension of 1,400 feet had been built from the end of Harford Pier, making way for the largest oil pipeline in the world at the time. Over the next four decades, the light shone bright and helped provide safe passage for many a vessel. On April 3, 1935, electricity finally reached the lighthouse. Four years later, as times were changing, the light station control changed hands to the Coast Guard. The top position at the station was no longer the head keeper, but now the more military officer in charge. Then war broke out and everything changed. The bombing at Pearl Harbor shocked the nation. Within 24 hours, the Point San Luis Lighthouse was transformed into a fortified watch station. Guns were placed in strategic positions. Extra men were stationed on the grounds. Double watches were initiated, as well as nightly blackouts for safety. Within weeks, a wooden lookout tower was constructed. The lighthouse was now key in protecting one of the most vital oil loading facilities on the Pacific coast. 16 days after Pearl Harbor, on the night of December 23, 1941, an 8,272-ton Union oil tanker named the SS Montebello finished loading at Avila, passed by the Point San Luis Lighthouse and headed up the coast on its way to British Columbia. Roughly an hour and a half later, 
A Japanese submarine launches a pair of torpedoes. The first is a dud, but the second hits the Montebello in her number two hold and explodes. Miraculously, the oil holds are untouched. The 38-man crew abandons the tanker and four lifeboats and makes for the shore under a barrage of enemy fire. Paddling desperately to escape, the men in the lifeboats look back just as the sun rises to see the Montebello sink. Six hours later, they reach the shore in Cambria, exhausted but alive. Following the end of World War II, the lighthouse and surrounding buildings continued in an era of modernization until eventually in 1974, the Coast Guard installed an automated light and fog signal, locked the doors, and vacated the premises. For nearly 20 years, the lighthouse lay unoccupied, falling into much disrepair and nearly forgotten. However, in 1995, seeing its significance to the history of Avila and the people of the Central Coast, the Point San Luis Lighthouse Keepers nonprofit organization is formed and begins a decade-long undertaking to restore and maintain the light station, opening it to the public for education and recreation for years to come.